All right, y'all, let's talk budgets. Hey, you guys, welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to another video. So it's time for a budget update. So if you're new to my channel, um, you would not have been prepped for this. So I work August through May. So I get paid in the months of August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. June and July, I do not get a paycheck because I am a 10 month employee. So I'm technically unemployed for those two months, but then I go right back to work in August. No problem, I love my schedule. I mean, listen, I'm a teacher for a whole reason because I love having my summers off. I love having days off throughout the year. I love having, you know, winter break. I love having spring break. I enjoy that schedule and always have. So 23 years in and um, it's just worked out well for me. But with that being said, when I moved to the county that I work in now, and I've been here 15 years, 15 years with this system, um, several years back, so it's been a good little amount of time, they stopped paying us 12 months. Like they used to break out our whole um, annual salary over 12 months and they went to doing it in 10 months. I think you can request to do it now in 10 months, I mean, in 12 months again. I don't know because once they changed it, I just went to that schedule. So um, I bank with the credit union and the credit union will come in and they will take a portion of each check for 10 months out of your check. And they will then put that in what's called a summer share account for you. And in the end of June and the end of July, they will split it in half and they will dump into your checking account. So I have $393 a month taken out of my checking account, out of my check, put into a summer share account, giving me $3,930 for the summer months for June and July. That broken in half is $1,965. That's how much money my kids and I had to live on that's my paycheck or my money. So you do, if you've been joining me for a while, you know my kids receive child support, but I don't count child support in my regular income because that is, it has in the past been irregular. Um, Dad has been doing amazing getting things to us and making sure that the kids have what they need. But in the past, it has been irregular. So if I were to count it into my budget and depend on that money, then if it doesn't come in, something is going to run short in my bills. And I am not about that life. I'm not about the run short life. It just doesn't work for me. So I don't do it. I stopped counting in his money as a part of my regular income years ago. Whatever comes in, we do use for the kids, whatever they have needs. And we do that. But I don't count it in my regular income anymore. So we had a kid's deposit that came in today. And I also had some unexpected uh, blessings come in. And so I wanted to share those numbers with you and kind of update the budget as of today, which is July 7th. Today is July the 7th. So this is our update thus far. And let's jump into those numbers. All right. So our kids deposit for today that came in was $224.46. So $224.46. Now, right off the top of this, I do give 10% to the church. So that automatically, I count, uh, that would be 23. So I'm gonna subtract 23. And that's gonna give me 201.46. Now, I do have to get Alana's curriculum um, this month. And I also am trying to put savings into the kids. Even though I don't really put savings into mom's savings account, so none of my baby steps get any money in the summer if I don't have it, um, I do try to keep up with the kids. So I'm going to subtract from this the $50 that I put in the kids' accounts. So that's going to be kids' savings. I'm going to name that tied to make sure. Okay, so subtract 50. That's going to give me 151.46. Now, in order to get sister's curriculum, the rest of the money that I need to get her curriculum is um, $70. So 70 more dollars 
for her curriculum. And then I'm going to take that away. That's going to leave me with 8146. Now, with 8146, Jackson has to have some clothes this month. So I'm going to get a few pieces each week. Um, I was going to try to do a big shop, but I'm not able to do that specifically because I need to get sisters the rest of her curriculum. Next week, this won't be a an item here. So I'll, I'll be able to have a little more at one time, but not this week. And I'm also working on my three to six month uh, pantry storage. So I'm going to take $20 from this. And that's going to be for my three to six month storage for the pantry. Of course, those are some series of videos that have been coming out. And that's going to leave me with $61.46. So I'm going to take $60. And that's going to be for Jackson's clothes. Subtract 60. And that's going to leave me with $146. Now what I'm going to do with that $146 is I'm going to let that roll into my checking account. Because sometimes I just like to have a few extra dollars in there just in case anything goes wrong. I miscalculated somewhere or something like that. So let me go back to um, a blessing that some blessings that came in. So I'm going to mark this differently. That's going to be called blessings. So um, I had $125 come in. I had $63 come in. I had $270 come in. So um, so that gave me $458. Now from $458, 46 of that is going out for tithe. So that would be $46. Well, it actually would be an offering. Same thing. It's still going to my church. So I'm going to subtract $46. That's going to give me $412. Now, I'm going to subtract 63 from this 412. So, um, that's going to give me 349. So, I've been having some sciatic nerve pain. And a friend of mine, really good friend of mine, she used to keep my kids for me. So, somebody I know here personally where I live um, has been going to a chiropractor. And we were talking about, I was like, man, I need to go to chiropractor. To, to figure out if I can get my leg looked at. Well, chiropractors around here do not take health insurance. So it's going to be a whole lot of money for me to go to the chiropractor, like over $200 for the initial consultation, plus every visit you pay a certain amount to get adjusted. So I was talking to my friend. I said, you know, I'm just trying to watch my pennies. I just really don't have that this time. And she was like, well, Shakima, I'm going to sew into your life $63. And the reason she did 63 is because if you go to the chiropractor that she goes to and she refers you, you get a referral credit. So my friend referred me and I got a referral credit. So this is for the chiropractor. So that's $63. That leaves me with $249. Now, I know that I want to go twice at least to get adjusted. So I'm going to subtract hundred dollars for the adjustments that's going to be for two adjustments that's going to leave me with 249 now 249 I have to use for Alana's curriculum because the other money that came in um, was a was a blessing for her curriculum so it was like okay I want to give you this for her curriculum so 249 um, and I just I took a tithe off of the 270 so that's why that's less than what came in plus um the 70 uh 70 dollars over here that i put from dad's money that gives me 319 i had in my um sinking fund so this is from dad that's for curriculum um i had 88 dollars in my sinking fund that's going to give me 407 now the curriculum 
on Amazon is $403. So there's gonna be some tax. So I'll still be able to get this even if I have to put a few little extra dollars here for tax, no problem. I already have Jackson's and I'm gonna get Alana's. I will be buying this. Um, I'll be getting this on Wednesday on the 8th. I'll be buying that on the 8th because it'll give me time to shift over that other money that I need to shift over. So this is going to give me enough money to be able to go ahead and pay for her curriculum. I've got Jackson's curriculum and there's one other class that I'm trying to get her in. It is an apology, uh, an apologetics class, a Bible class for um, the fall and spring semester. It's $400 but you pay for it half and half. So 200 for the fall and 200 for the spring. And we have until August the 1st to pay for that. So I'm not worried about it. I'm still trying to see if she can handle the material. It's not about having the money to pay for the class more than it is can she handle the, the um, material because I don't want to spend money if she's not able to handle the material. She is going into the 11th grade and so I think she would be okay um, to take the class, but I don't want to put pressure on her. So um, that's what we're looking at right there. All right now, so, you know, just trying to figure out your budget and how everything is going to go and what is going to go where, sometimes you have to play this juggling game of figuring out what needs to be purchased. So I know easily I could spend $200 on Jackson for clothes. That is something that I could do. It's not something that I can do this week, but if I piecemeal it out and every week that something comes in from dad, I can get a few pieces here. So this week, I'm going to focus on two things. I want to get him at least a pair of jeans, one pair of khakis, at least a pair of shorts or two, depending on the price, and he needs a new pair of shoes. He tried on Sunday shoes on Sunday and came back and said, mom, these are too small. And I just bought the shoes. The boy wore the shoes one time, one time, just once. So depending in that $60 that I have allocated for him, I may be able to get a pair of jeans and a pair of khakis, maybe one pair of shorts and a pair of shoes. That's this week. Next week, I'll just prioritize. Okay, he needs another pair of jeans at least. He doesn't need another pair of khakis, but he might need a different pair of black dress pants for church. Um, and he needs two pairs of shorts and two tops. Maybe he needs socks or maybe he needs a pair of slides. He does need a new pair of slides. Um, and Walmart has the kind that I really like for him. But um, last time we looked, they didn't have the size. So I'm going to look again, see what I can find. If not, we'll go somewhere else. And I don't want to order anything because I do want him to be able to try it on because his foot is so big and so different depending on the shoe, it might feel a little different. So I want to be able to have the things that I need to have. So this is what I have said before. And I, I, I share this quite a lot on my Facebook, different places. There's a, a particular verse of scripture that says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. The Lord blesses me and I am very thankful that he does. He blesses me in multiple ways. It's not just financially. It's not just, um, you know, with money. But it was such a blessing that my friend was able to say, oh, Shakima, I saw your post on Facebook and I was going to this place. And if you just tell him I referred you, you're going to get a referral credit because I think somebody referred her. And so she knew how it worked to get the referral because when I went and sat down with the doctor, she said, well, how did you find out about us? I said, well, my friend referred us. So she was like, yes, you know, she needed those. She wants referrals. So if we're able to do that, then I think that's very good. Um, and I have to prioritize my health at this time in my life. So when that other blessing came through, I was thinking, okay, this will allow me to get two adjustments if it's $50 per adjustment. Because somebody else ate, you know, my other friend, Shantae, her name is Shantae. My friend Shantae said, hey, Shakima, let me sew into your health. I have done my eating journey well. I've done keto. I've done, I've exercised. But I haven't always made my health a priority. And so I'm needing to do that now. Because the way that this nerve pain, this sciatic nerve pain is right now, I am um, barely able, I can't. I'm not even walking straight, um, but God is still good. 
And if this is my mobility level, then this is my mobility level. But I know him to be a good God. I know him to be a healing God. And I know that he can use medicine and doctors to help me. So I am going to take this um, help to get my legs straight so that I am able to walk. I've been doing a lot of sitting because it's a challenge to walk. And this is going on my third week. Um, normally before I would just do the stretches that I learned at um, physical therapy and they would help. But this is not being, I'm not being helped right now with those particular stretches. It might be with the adjustments and the stretches. It might feel better. And I can continue to do that. Now, I won't be able to go every other day or anything like that. But if I recoup my $325 that I pay for Taekwondo every month, that would give me at least six visits a month. I don't foresee six visits a month maybe one one a week and that would be four weeks which would be two hundred dollars for right now until I'm able to get my leg together and not um where it's gonna keep going out on me my back is fine my arms are fine I have no other limb pain with the exception of this one um it's down the left side of it starts at my um below my back and goes down and then because that pain is there it shoots down my leg and into my toes so I've got a couple toes that are numb or going numb now and so I'm sitting as to not try to walk because I walk like this <laughs> this is how I walk now and um, but when I get up from sitting I catch myself because I've been sitting so long and the I, I have like the strength in this leg is not there. So anywho, that's a whole nother video. But um, I'm going to jump to my budget sheet and let you guys see how I update the budget sheet. And then we're going to wrap up this um, update. All right, you guys. So for kids deposits here, I'm going to put in 224.46. So I am going to go back up and put in a note there. So remember, I showed you guys how to go to notes, which is right on the comment. And I'm just going to say um, 7-7. Seven, seven. And I'll put in 224-46. And so that'll be my note when that money was deposited. Um, I received a side hustle for $8.40. I did have, again, going back to that note, $125 love gift and a $63 love gift for a chiropractor visit. I'm going to go in and update this note to add in um, $270 for Alana's curriculum. And so I'm going to update that total in that box and so 188 plus 458 so that's going to give me 458 that's going to give me a total of two thousand six hundred fifty six dollars and four cents that needs to be um taken care of so i'm going to go to july 5th through the 11th and put in some information all right i do want to take us back to this first week over here, because I want to make sure that I put in for my tithe, um, the $21 on Thursday. Let me see, there was $13 that came from the love gift, then $7 that came from the 63 and then $1 from the side hustle of $8.40. So that's where the $21 came from. So even though it was a love gift, uh, because in one of my previous videos, I know that somebody asked me if I got a gift for the kids, did I give uh, tithe or offering off of it? So yes, I try to pull um, any anything that comes in, I try to pull off 10% at least for the church. Because that's just our conviction. It's what, we, it's what I believe. I make that decision for my kids right now because I'm the parent. Um, my little kids, very fortunately for me, believe in tithing as well. But they have been raised that way. So they're okay with me doing it. And I didn't ask their permission. I just did it anyway. So today is the 7th 
So I'm on Tuesday and I know for sure that my health wage gym has come out $15 on Monday. Um, let's see what else came out. Nothing else. Oh, shoot. Doggone. I'm sorry. I put that on the wrong. I put that on the wrong thing. Oopsie. That's not. It's my health wage gym that goes down here. I apologize. I got that wrong. All right. Now, I'm on Tuesday. So, I'm going to go back down and put in some stuff. Personal care expense. So I'm going to say $63 here. That's going to be for my chiropractor. And I'll just say that was for the initial visit. Um, moving down, I haven't done anything for Jackson yet. Kids accounts miscellaneous. So I'm going to put in here 120. Well, I'm going to put 50. Okay, that's kids savings because I think somewhere I put kids curriculum. I just got to find it. Then moving back down to tithe here, I'm simply tithing off of the 224. 46 because I already tithed off of the 188 and 270 that I got. Actually, no, I'm tithing off of the 224 and the 270. So 23 and 27 is 50. And that's going to be off of the 224, 46, which was the kids' deposit, and the 270 deposit that came in the other day because I didn't do it yet. I didn't do it. Just wanted to make sure it hit my bank fine with no problems. All right, let me go back. All right, I'm going to go back up to regular payments again because I missed something. All right, kids' curriculum right here for Alana. This is going to be... 70 plus the 88 dollars i have in my sinking fund so this is going to be 158 plus the two so i'm going to change that number to 401. so that's going to be 401. so now i know that there's going to it's going to tell me that i'm short some kind of way or it's not going to give me the right amount of money because what i did not do is I didn't take away from my sinking fund, which I've got to go back and take away from my sinking fund. So right here where it says that I have homeschool curriculum, I have 88.87. So I'm going to move down and go ahead and subtract $88. So I'm going to say 7, 7, 20, 20. It's going to be $88. That is coming from the sinking fund for homeschool curriculum, um, and this is going to be for Alana. So that's going to take my sinking fund down to 87 cent for homeschool curriculum, but I'm done with that one. But what I didn't do that I should do now is now I'm gonna go back over here, go back to my back to my personal budget sheet and now I have to figure out where I'm putting that $88 right here where it says funds transferred right so I'm going to put $88 from the sinking fund because I'm transferring those funds so that's going to be um for that homeschool curriculum. So I'm gonna add that in. So I've got 458 plus 88 is gonna be 546. All right, now, so that's gonna give me $2,744.04 to deal with. Let me go down and make sure. Now I have not paid my cell phone bill just yet, so I'm holding off. 
401 is going into the homeschool curriculum. 63 was for my chiropractor. Uh, another 100 is going to go there, but I haven't spent it yet. So that says that I've spent two hundred four. I'm at $2,488.07, giving me $255.97 left. Now, let's break that down. So 255.97, subtract 100 for the chiropractor, subtract 113 for my cell phone bill, will give me $42.97 left out of the monies that have come in so far. Now, where did I miss some monies? I'm still missing something from somewhere. I'm still missing something, so I've got to figure it out, right? Let me go back. Did the 23, kids savings I did, the curriculum I did. Okay, I didn't do the $20. I'm missing something somewhere. Let me go back and look. Okay, I'm, hmm. $20 is going here, and that's going to be for my three to six months storage. Then for clothing, $60 is going here. That's for Jackson. Let's see, I'm still missing something. 25, 401, 5801, 63, 71, okay, it's leaving me with one, okay, let me see, 175, 97, subtract 113, that leaves me with 6297, meaning I could get one adjustment, but I need to make sure that I am not missing anything on this spreadsheet because I should have enough for the adjustment and the cell phone bill. So this is what happened. So I budgeted in $150 for gas. And so far, I have not taken out $150 in gas. I didn't even take out the cash. I had enough for the lawn care. And I had enough for Gracie. So that was $120. And Jackson's hair. So 150. So this is where I made my error. I'm going to take that 150 out. Now, all right, now I'm at 325.97. Subtract 113 for my cell phone. Subtract 100 for my two adjustments, leaving me $112.97. And this is going to be for my gas. And the reason why I didn't go ahead and take the gas out is because we haven't been anywhere. I have gas in the car already, and we have not driven. We don't need to drive anywhere, so I just left it there. Normally, if I do $25, that's enough to take me about two weeks. So I just said, okay, let me leave it. If I need anything or if I'm running short some kind of way, then I know that I have money in the account. That's how that worked out. So before, when I showed you the 150, I had already just worked it out on my budget sheet, but I haven't taken that money out of the bank yet. So we're we're good and squared away on that part. So that's gonna leave me 112.97 for my gas. So there that is. All right, you guys, so there it is. There was a lot happening this week and sometimes I kind of get, I get, um, if say I, 
plan it one way and the plan doesn't go to, according to plan and something else changes, sometimes I get kind of confused. So it takes me a little bit. I need to sit down. I need to write it down. I need to make sure and go back and check those um, transactions to make sure I didn't forget anything because my biggest fear is um, missing something and having an insufficient funds past my bank. That it has been many, many, many years, many years since I have had an insufficient funds past my bank. Even when I was still paying off baby step number two, I did not have insufficient funds. I would say it has been right at 10 years plus since I've had that. When I got out of that marriage, I have not had an insufficient, I don't think have had an insufficient, or maybe I had one in the 11, in the past 11 years, maybe one. And I think that was just an oversight on my part by a few cents, some kind of where. But I did not want to have that issue with having those insufficient funds. It's the reason why I leave a few dollars in there, because I think that one time that I did, it was for a little bit of change. And what happened was because I hadn't had any insufficient funds previous to that in a long time, my bank said, um, we're not going to charge you the fee because you have not had insufficient funds and we give you two free two free mistakes like that per year. So I was thankful for that because it was only by a couple of pennies. I mean, it was just a little bit of change that I didn't calculate it right. And so I was so thankful. I got that little letter in the mail and that made me so mindful to keep the pennies, you know, keep the pennies years and years. So one other thing happened and I didn't show you on the budget sheet. I'll just fix it myself this week. So when my mom was living with me, and for, for you new subscribers, my mom passed away last September. She was in hospice care um, from May until she passed in September. She came to live with our family in May, and we took care of her. Towards the latter part of August, it was the very final, I think it was the last two days of August, the 30th and the 31st, going into September. She passed September the 8th we actually put her in a nursing facility because I was going back to work and she was getting to a point where Alana could not keep her here um, with that responsibility. Long story short, I got her checked into the, to the facility. I signed all the paperwork and they told me and I signed a sheet that says they will never send me a bill. Even though I signed her in, everything would be in her name. All of her funds that she was getting were getting transferred to the facility. We never took any of her money when she lived here. We totally took on all that responsibility. And any money she had went into an account to pay for her arrangements because she didn't have insurance. And by the time, we couldn't get insurance on her because she already had a diagnosis of cancer. So this past week, I send the kids to the mailbox. We hardly ever go to our mailbox because I pay everything online or just about. And we, I got a note from the nursing home that said I had a bill for, for my mom. And if I didn't pay it within five days or make a payment arrangement, they were going to send that to collections. So first of all, I am upset because I have worked very hard to get myself to a good point with my credit to get myself to a good point with my funds, to get myself to a good point where my kids and I are not struggling like we used to. On top of that, September of last year, on the 1st of September, I went to the office and said, are there any outstanding bills? Is there anything I need to take care of? Do I need to pay anything? No, Miss Wilson, you're good. I got a letter saying there was a bill. I called. To, re to ask about the bill, left my number, nobody called back. I call again, left my number about the bill, nobody called me back. So I took the money out of my baby step number three and I just paid it. But here's the funny part. So they just sent me a letter saying they're gonna send me to collections if I don't pay this bill, which is not my bill. I called them on Friday. Oh the lady that you need to speak to she took the day off for the holiday call back on Monday okay I call back on Monday I said this is my name this is my mother's name I want to pay the bill the lady says 
oh, I'm not at my desk right now. Um, I can call you back in an hour or two. Now, you just threatened to send me to collections. I'm calling you to pay the bill and you are not at your desk right now. You can't go get there on hold like I could be on. Like, hold, please. Four hours later, four hours later after I called on Monday, she still had not called me back. So I called her back pay the bill. I have the receipt in my email and I'm just done with it. So a friend of mine said, Shakima, you shouldn't have paid it. Maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should have. I just want to protect the integrity of my credit score. I want to protect the integrity of all the work the kids and I have been doing these last few years. All the sacrifices, all the stuff we didn't buy and the stuff we didn't get and the goodwills we didn't go to. I want to preserve that. And so for that reason, I just took the money out of baby step three and paid the bill. It was not, it was perfect. The money was there. It was perfectly fine. Done. Um, so I said all that to say, I didn't show you that on my, on my, um, savings plan where I have to go in and subtract that money. So I will have to go in and subtract that amount because I didn't, um, I didn't do it on the sheet when I was showing you. So I'll go back and do it now, but I wanted you to know that. So anyway, again, all of that long explanation and update because there were a lot of uh, moving parts this week. Normally we don't have that many moving parts, but you know, like I said, blessings were coming from here and from there and all types of things. And so we were just very, we are very, very blessed. I can't even say thank you enough to those people who bless us. I mean, it's, you know, randomized, different people. You don't ever know who wants to bless you. And so um, I would not be able to get my chiropractor, get my leg. And y'all, I'm honest, I haven't showed y'all how I'm walking on any videos yet. All the videos that you've seen up to this one are videos we filmed about a couple weeks ago. I'm about two weeks behind. So I haven't shown y'all what I'm walking like because it's not pretty. It's really not. I look okay sitting down, but when I get up, it's like, you know, I'm walking like that. So that's not good to, to show. But I'm thankful that I will be able to finally get some relief from that. And I'm thankful that there was enough to cover everything that needs to be covered. And I'm also thankful that I'm able to get the kids curriculum and we are able to move on with life. So anyway, there it is, you guys. Lots going on, but all good. So I do want to thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you have questions about anything I went over, comment down below. Be happy to answer any questions. If you have suggestions that are kind, I'll be happy to look at your suggestions. Thank you so much for all of those as well. We do appreciate you. Like the video, thumb it up. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider it. We'd love to keep you around as a part of our YouTube family. We are always doing something over here and we invite you to do it with us. So there it is. Thank you guys so much. Good luck on your budgeting and maintaining the integrity of the hard work you've put in to your budgets to get you and your family where you are right now. We love you guys and we'll see you next time. Bye now.